Okay, hello, hello, hello. Another great day to be alive and serving the Lord. Open your Bibles to Jeremiah 17. Uh, I want to give an announcement quick about what's going on in the news that you might not have picked up, just one thing. And then we're going to do a couple of messages here about the church. Uh, I love to teach on end times, but part of the end times too is the, the church and the false church and staying on that straight and narrow path. But first, um, one of the announcements that uh, I've been watching for a couple of months because I have friends in Scotland, different parts of the world that have been telling me, they call it the conscription, but it's uh, our draft, that a bill was uh, slipped in Friday night, June 14th, with another bill, and it was uh, both parties, bipartisan, that um, you, if you want to research it, look up the National Defense Authorization Act, National Defense Authorization Act, H.R. 8070, and the House passes a defense bill to automatically register men 18 through 26 for the draft for selective service systems, as we know the selective service system. And in case a draft is reinstated, which would only take now the sign, I think, of the president's, right, the presidency, the United States will have a list, a break glass in case of emergency situation. So this is just preparation. Keep your eye on it. Uh, 18 through 26, they did raise, raise it a little bit to 26 years old. And I've been sharing this with people, and a lot of people go, oh, it's, I'm too old, I don't worry about it. Well, this is about our kids. Yeah. This is about our grandkids. And this is about the wars the Bible talks about and the rumors of wars. So keep praying about that and keep your eyes open. And uh, again, it's wars and rumors of wars of what's going around here. In Jeremiah chapter 17, I'm going to talk and address just a little bit about the things that have been going on in the church, in the so-called church anyway. Jeremiah 17 in verse 5, it says, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heat in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. But blessed is a man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spread out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh. But her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. And this is why our minds have to be stayed on the Lord, because he gives us perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. When things start twirling around and all this bad news, we got to keep our eyes on the Lord, because if we start looking at preachers that are falling right now, and I have a lot of questions. Uh, why is this happening now? Why are all the major megachurch ministers all of a sudden leaving the ministry, some of them, two major ones, to their children? They're leaving, one from sin, one from some other different things. I'm not even going to go into the scandals of what it is. But I... I always go back to what the agendas of the new system are and what is the agenda, the one world religion. Are they shaking things down to promote uh, bringing all, who knows? All I can say is something is very fishy and is this another thing to mock and put Christianity down? And we've talked a lot about these churches and some of these churches, if you have a great pastor, be thankful because they're really hard to find uh, that really declare the truth and are not just promoting under Rome uh, things that they're supposed to be doing. And this is something I've taught years and years ago, but we're still seeing it in 
uh, affecting a lot of people. There's a lot of good people in these churches that are being brought down. I believe they're being brought down by design. Um, kind of reminds me of you know the whole Me Too movement, and now it's the church movement, Me Too. Uh, there's just something that just doesn't feel right. Divide and conquer. Are they being brought down by design to destroy Christianity? I don't know. These are my personal thoughts. I like to think outside the box. I want to uh, let people know a lot of these pastors have been questionable. Their teachings have already been false. We've been talking a lot about false teachers for a long time where their, their whole goal is numbers and money, not Christianity at all. But let's look in Acts chapter 20, right along with this line, as we get into what we're going to talk about. In Acts 20... In verse 20, let's start 26. It's so hard <laughs> to just pick a couple verses when you... Uh, well, let's look at verse 21. He's talking about testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Hey, repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to see, who is he preaching to? The Jews and the Greeks. Let me read that again, because some of you think that they need a new covenant and a new testament. What, that's not what the Bible says here. Testifying both to the Jews and to the Greeks, repentance towards God, faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. I just had to squeeze that in there. And then verse 26, Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. Now why is he saying he's pure from the blood of all men? He's saying that because... Verse 27, he said, I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. So false teachers only take a few scriptures and they talk about themselves. Everything's about themselves. Sow your seed to me and you're going to have an abundant crop. Well, that's not Christianity at all. That's not what the Bible even teaches. And it says here, the whole counsel. Take therefore heed unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Verse 29. Now, if he was saying this then, think about what's happening now. It did not go away. The danger of false teachers has not decreased. It's increased as the end times keep continually coming forward. For I know this, that after my departing, shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise. And what are they going to do? They're going to arise. They're going to have big platforms. They're going to have pedestal ministries speaking perverse things. And what are these perverse things? You can get rich. You'll never be sick. You, ha you can have whatever you say. You can speak to this mountain. You can have dreams. You can go to heaven. You can see jello in heaven. All this weird stuff that's going on. Speaking perverse things. And why is it? To draw disciples after them. So when these wolves come in, they're trying to devour you, but they're also having a mission from the enemy is to take you away from the Lord. Take you away from the simplicity of the gospel. And what do you do? You get your eyes on a man. You put man as an idol. And we are not to have any idols. We got rid of idols when we got saved. So now what the enemy did, he put idols in the church. So we get our eyes on men. We focus on these men, that they are so great. They're so close to God. They're, uh, you know, they, they cannot do any wrong. They're so close to God. Now, some people say all this shaking is God exposing. God is revealing. He's bringing all these hidden things to light. Could be. I don't know. But I, I don't trust the whole religious system because the whole religious system is not what we think it is. It's not controlled by who we think it is at all. So therefore, watch, just like Jesus always said, he said the Pharisees, watch out for the leaven of the Pharisees and watch out for the leaven of Herod. And we've got them to together combined, the religion of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod today in our movements. They're both combining. So therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn He's warning them every night and every day. There's going to be wolves. There's going to be false shepherds. There's going to be people coming in trying to draw disciples after themselves. And I want to ask, where are the warnings today? Where are the warnings? Well, some people are warning. 
And some people are tired. They're tired of warning because a lot of people don't want to listen. And then he goes on, he said, I love verse 33, I've coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. You can't be telling truth for the love of money because at some point you're going to sell out. If you can be sold out for 30 pieces of silver, you will. You have to make a decision. That's not what my whole ministry is about. But we're supposed to support the weak. And this is what it talks about. It's more blessed to give than to receive. What's he talking about here? Helping other people. Not about you getting rich. All right, we'll leave that. So now deception and manipulation are characteristics of cults. And we want to talk a little bit about cults, and we're going to talk about spiritual abusive churches and spiritual abuse period. And then the second part of this, we're going to talk about surviving uh, the abuse, surviving, how to come out, make sure that we walk in forgiveness, make sure you don't stop serving the Lord, find people, find some help, get some help, because it's traumatizing when you realize that the person you are following that you thought was serving God, now come all the scandals coming out. All these different things are coming out. And I believe what the enemy wants, he wants people to fall away. He wants them to fall away. And you have to make a decision. I don't care who falls. I don't care. No man is going to um, replace Jesus. And Jesus never fell. My eyes are on him. Thank God for the things I've learned from other people. But I am not serving man. I do not put any minister as an idol. Okay, so there's uh, spiritual abusive churches that are similar to characteristics that are found in cults. Now, what is a cult? A cult's built around a personality. They always have to have a leader that's got a lot of charisma, a leader that's been to heaven, a leader that's a prophet, a leader that has a lot of money, a leader that you want to follow because you want to be like them. This is one of the traps the enemy does is that we all want to feel a part of something bigger than ourselves. And we all want to be a part. We all want to feel like a family. And this is what's so devastating when all this scandal stuff happens. People start falling away. Families get ripped apart. And this is the other thing. The devil loves to destroy families. God promotes families, he blesses families, and then enemies out to steal, kill, and destroy them. So these cults, they use deception to make people two things. They want you dependent, they want to make you codependent on them, and they want you to obey them. Even to the point of, will you follow someone that wants civil war, that promotes a really far, far right situation, pick up arms and fight? Uh, you got to be aware of all the different situations that are happening around us in our world today. And usually these cults, these churches, these political situations, these religious situations, they're headed by a narcissistic leader, a narcissistic politician, uh, religious organizations that are not right. That's all I'll say. We're, they're not right. And what's a nar narcissist? I've taught a lot about that. Go through some of my older ones. Uh, a narcissist basically is someone that's all about himself. I'll do it my way. Uh, they always talk about themselves. Everything's about themselves. Uh, very annoying. But it's really hard when these narcissist pastors are in the pulpit because they talk about themselves all the time. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, 5, we are not here to preach about ourselves. We're here to preach Christ, right? But these leaders, in any arena you find them, they believe that they're special. They're anointed. You can't touch the anointed. They're the chosen one. Watch out when you hear, I'm the chosen one. What are you chosen for? Uh, they're very arrogant. And again, they talk about themselves all the time. And that's how they get their followings as everyone starts putting these people on pedestals, and they start worshiping them as little gods. That's what the whole Branham thing was. That's a whole, there's so many other things now that even when I first got saved, someone I know said he went to heaven, he played in the water with Jesus, and all these revelations he had when he went to heaven. And now I, I look back through that area of my life, and I was like, what a bunch of beautiful sunshine. Call called it... <laughs> 
fairy tales, a way to draw people to themselves and make up stories and these visions, like in Jeremiah, the Lord said, I did not give them these visions and I didn't send them. Well, we still have the same kind of people. They have their own visions, their own dreams, and God didn't send them. So these kind of people in these uh, churches, ministries, wherever you find yourself, are dominating, very controlling. Uh, they share a lot of traits with cult leaders. And one of the things that they do is they always demonize, belittle, and defame their opponents, their, their uh, churches that they don't like, or politicians put... I was thinking about, you know, if my dad were alive today to ask him. Politicians are fighting the way we've never seen in politics before. I mean, you could listen to a debate way back in the 70s or something, and it was just like, you know, they, they just showed their different sides. Now it's like they demonize each other, right? Yep. And they gaslight. They gaslight you. Uh, 2016, I had a real rude awakening when I was like, oh, yeah, we got to you know, vote for this person because they're going to lock so-and-so up, and they're doing this and that. And then afterwards, they had a party together, and it was shown that they were laughing and having a great time together. And I was just like, wow, we've all been played. We've all been played. But again, most people don't understand politics and don't want to know. Uh, but to you that do... Have ears to hear. So politicians tell you basically what you want to hear. And it might start out good, but like I always say, have they changed the taxes? Your taxes going down? Mm -hmm. uh, what's going, what changed? Oh, I'm, hoya, hoya, hoya. Let's not get into it. Mm -hmm. So they harm the followers in these religious m movements and political movements. They harm. This is the problem. There's a lot of harming. There's a lot of uh, money being taken. There's a lot of lies being told. There's a lot of gaslighting. And I'm going to read this uh, in a second here. And I'm going to read this twice. I'm going to read this next week too. Uh, seduced by life on a pedestal. Because when people put someone on a pedestal, I don't care if it's a movie star, and this is what the enemy uses too. If we want to cause change, social change, we'll have a movie star do it, or a famous singer do it. We'll bring him as, as a little girl, and she's really cute, but then as she changes, and everyone's hooked on her, now we're going to bring out the real reason why we rose this person up, and they're going to bring in social change. Or sports people. It doesn't matter what they do, but they use these people, these stars, to bring about the changes that they want. So we place people on pedestals, movie stars, religious leaders, political leaders, and we put them to a uh, place where we can't touch them. We don't dare criticize them. And this is idolatry. A pedestal is a place of superiority. And to put anyone on a pedestal in the ministry, especially, is dangerous for them, and it's also dangerous for you. Because if you start believing the press about yourself, you're going to get very arrogant, right? And it's dangerous for them because they're getting more and more into pride. And they don't serve people. They want people to serve them. And in the ministry, we are called to serve people, care about people. These narcissistic leaders do not care about people. They use people, their numbers, their attendance, everything. It's all about how many people you got, how many, you know, put on a good show. Christianity is not putting on the best show in town. Sure. Having the best light show, which we had back in the day. We had the first, all this stuff, smokes and mirrors, and boy, we had it going on back in the, and I look back and go, well, that wasn't the Lord. I mean, can you even go to a church now that's someone that preaches truth but doesn't have all the showy showmanship? A lot of people, they, they wouldn't even think about going to a church that's that boring, right? Because everything's been so hyped up. I'm telling you, as everything shakes, we got to get back to the Bible. And you got to get back to reading it for yourself and make sure whoever's talking to you that you check out what they're saying. And is what they're saying the truth? Like this one verse I was just reading to you in verse 21 here, there's a whole political movement going now. 
And no matter what the politics are, they can do what they want because they're doing it in the name of God. That's very dangerous. And it's also the leaven of Herod. Okay, so we place people on pedestals. And when you do, they demand special treatment. Uh, back in the day when I was in the mega churches, uh, I had bodyguards. I didn't like bodyguards, but they followed me all around. I couldn't, I just like really, uh, I, I didn't like that elevation feeling. And you got ushered in, you got ushered out. and I, oh, this just... But these people, they love that. The narcissists love that. They love the special attention. They love having people do all their work for them. Uh, go get me coffee. Woo me this. Go me that. And not that you can't have a team that does help you, but it's the spirit behind it. That's what I'm talking about. They use people's talents. If they see a singer, they want a singer. We had the best music in town, I'll tell you, back in the day. And then as soon as a better singer came, then that singer got discarded and another one or a musician got in its place. And I always used to say, why, why, what happened to them? How come they're, they can't sing anymore? Whatever. Because I never got involved in a lot of things. I huh, wasn't allowed to. But they use people's talents and they discard and replace them without pity or remorse. <sighs> that is very sad and it hurts people. Cults harm people. They hurt them. They use the pulpit to glorify themselves, and many of them behind the scenes are aggressive bullies. They demand respect that's not even... You would not believe that these people that run churches, the things I've seen, how authoritative they are and how they treat their people. And this is when I used to travel around in Canada, Washington, California. I couldn't believe and California wasn't so bad where I went, but some of these other places, I was just like, wow, they're so demanding. These pastors and their leaders, they're so, I wouldn't even dare ask some of these staff members to do what they were commanded to do. Now, there's some red flags that you need to watch about spiritual abuse. And one of the things they do is they surround themselves with yes people. Now, I'm going to read this. It's called Seduced by Life on a Pedestal. And many of you have been victims of pastors that neglected you. Wives, I'm talking here especially about pastors' wives and children. And not only that, but in every realm, there's a lot of people that have public life. This is, their, this is one of their contracts. This is not what they say, actually, but this is how they live. And if you're part of a very uh, visible ministry, this is what happens to you as a child. This is what happens to you as a wife. This happens to you in your life because you're basically not important to them, okay? This is uh, to the children and the spouse. We understand that I and my public performance are more important than anyone or anything else in this family. We understand that I will be pre preoccupied with giving my all to my public performance. I call this the mistress of ministry. We'll get that into that next week. We understand that I need to hear of your support, your loyalty, but not your struggles. We understand that I cannot be there for you. Doesn't that just rip your heart off? But I've lived this, and I know this is true, because you're on your own, basically, and that's what the, that's what the next sentence is. We understand that all of you are essentially on your own. Own. We understand that you're expected to totally deny all of your personal needs. And why do you need to deny your personal needs? Because you've got this minister, this politician, or whatever it might be, that's more important than you. So you're not important. It's like a rank, a top-down thing. You're kind of a, at the bottom. Your needs aren't important. Going to your basketball games isn't a priority. 
uh, going out to eat, taking care of the family isn't important. That's why I call this, this is like an anti-family spirit. This is an antichrist. This is not what God planned. This is not what God expects. This is not anything that's even right. Now, I don't know if they're doing this as much as they did back in the uh, 80s and 90s and 2000s, back when I was doing all this, but it, a lot of ministers were having a lot of trouble because they were doing this to their wives and their families. And there's also women that do this to their husbands, that think that they're not important, that they're, they have to obey God to the point of they don't take care of any of their husband's needs or their kids' needs. I've seen that as well. Now, this pedestal living is where leadership can create an appearance of being perfect and problem-free. I remember one of these guys, big mega guy, he said, I'm preaching on no more rejection, how to never be rejected again. That is such a fat lie <laughs> because we live in a whole world of rejection. And so these things are being taught are not even reality. It's a dream world. It's, but I'm in this pulpit and I'm perfect and I have all this authority and you submit to me and uh, you give me all your money, you attach your money to me and I'll make you prosperous. That's a cult. No one gets close to these people, but now people are just following them blindly. And this is hero worship. We're starting to now have idols. Talk about American idols. We have idols in the pulpit. Results, when you put someone on a pedestal like that, they're going to have a secret life, and they're going to compromise the truth. Some of this shaking now, some of these secrets are coming out. Is it by design, or is it really real? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if any of us really know. We hear the stories that are going around. But these idols get puffed up with pride. They elevate themselves above others, and then they get approval addiction. It's really important. You have to con constantly compliment them, but then they never validate their own children. Their own children are raised without their attention, without their love, without their support, and they struggle. They struggle with identity. They struggle with that father figure, that minister, and they don't know. There's such a, a blur for a lot of these survivors. Um, they choose their fans over their family. And let me close with this. When you try to come and find truth with these abusive, narcissistic, authoritative, dominating leaders, uh, you're labeled. Now all of a sudden, because you point out the problem, you're the problem. Because you're not supposed to question these people. Right. So now you're, you're isolated. You're told if you don't like it, you can leave because they refuse accountability. And they put yes people around them that will not question what they're doing. And this is, I've seen this so many times in so many different ministries. They refuse accountability. They have each other on their own board so that they can do whatever they want, basically. Uh, yeah, if people saw behind the scenes, some of the things I've seen behind the scenes that I, I'd love to talk about, uh, but it would really cause a shaking because people have so many of these ministers that are even on TV on such pedestals, they won't accept it. They won't receive it because it's not the image that they've uh, put up uh, or put up on this pedestal. So they lead by force, intimidation. They walk into a room, they expect you to acknowledge how great they are, right? <laughs> Uh, they rule by fear and intimidation and threats. First of all, that's not the Lord. The Lord doesn't run this way, operate this way. They refuse correction, or they believe the way they lead is not even wrong. They don't. You can tell them a thousand times what they're doing wrong, and it's like talking to a wall because they don't want to change. They're in charge. If you don't like it, you leave, which I did. Uh, they get into pride. They're not humble and they're not teachable. Now in Jeremiah, again, what, where we started with, cursed is the man that trusts in man. What does that word cursed means? You're going to be harmed. If you're putting man, your man, pastor, whatever it might be, politician, on a pedestal, 
you're going to have deep trouble and harassment and trouble. Evil, this is all the word cursed. Evil brought on by others, severe affliction, torment, and disaster. Why? Because we're not called to follow man. Because men are not God. I don't care this manifested sons of God's teachings went on forever and it's still around. They believe they're little gods, gods in them and they're, uh, they don't know how to, what, a bunch of spiritual hoya hush. But we can't put, and I did, I, I followed men, I thought they knew more, I got saved and I thought, well, they've been saved a long time, as long as many of you, you're smart people, but we've been deceived. So what do we do? And I'm going to close with this and we're going to pray. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Repent. Repent. And we're going to do a prayer of repentance here. And we have to come out of her. Come out of her, my people. Come out of the false churches. I've been crying this for quite a while now. Come out of her. Well, I don't think there's uh, anything wrong with the ones that I'm following. This, I hear this over and over and over again. I'm like... You have no idea what the real gospel is then because you're following the gospel of prosperity. You're following the law of attraction. You're following new age, all these things. You're progressive now. You're doing all these things and you think you're still serving the true and living God. So what do we do? First of all, we have to decide, am I really walking the narrow path? Am I walking with the Lord? Or am I walking in the ways of men? Am I walking in the teachings of the Bible? Or am I following the doctrines and demons and sedu seducing spirits of the devil? So let's pray. This was a prayer I prayed. And I said, Lord, I come to you with a humble heart. So we can all pray this. We come to you with a humble heart, confessing that we have followed celebrity pastors and movements. I'm so sorry for being taken in and deceived by false idols, and the hurt they've caused me and they've caused others. I ask for your forgiveness and cleansing through your Son, Jesus Christ. Help me turn away from a false gospel and walk in the truth that glorifies you, glorifies God. Lord, we ask for discernment and strength to resist what is not of you, Help us to pick up our cross, deny ourselves, and follow you. And help us do your will. In Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. If you have not accepted the Lord, today is the day to get your hearts and get your minds and stop following men. Thank God for what men have taught you if it's good. But you have to be discerning in this hour because the shaking is just starting. The shaking, and God says everything that can be shaken will be shaken, right? But he can't be shaken. He's the same yesterday, he's the same today, and he's the same forever. He doesn't change. So thank you. And then the other thing I want to say, closing number two or three, uh, <clears throat> something's going on with my emails. I try to email people back, and I, they'll give me an email, and I'll send it back, and it'll say, uh, mail undelivered. So I just want to apologize for some of you that haven't gotten a response from me. Uh, it's not that I'm not trying. <laughs> uh, from week to, huh? Weekend. Yeah, now it's, uh, I send emails to my husband and he's not getting them. So are we being watched probably? Do you care? Not really. We have to be strong. We have to stand no matter what happens. And we know that there's a lot of stuff going on in these end times. But let me hear where you're living. I want to make sure we're still loud and clear in your country. You don't even have to send a big thing. Just, you know, info at livinginhispresence.org. Just say, I'm listening to you from here. I was listening to, uh, uh, yeah, someone was talking about Australia again, that they're really culling a lot of chickens. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a big thing. This uh, whole way of they want to test animals to get rid of our meat supply. It's not good news, but you know what? If you know what's going on, there's just something about it doesn't shake you because you've been warned. The Lord's warned you. And he's also warned us about these false teachers. So as they fall or get exposed or replaced with their family members or whatever they do, 
don't let it upset you. Just keep on keeping on. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't get caught up and distracted with all the hoopla that they're trying to bring. Bring down this church. Bring down the, Some of them weren't of the Lord anyway. They never were. They're not even uh, a part of the true church. They're part of the false church. So let everything that can be shaken, let it shake. Amen? All right. To watch Roberta's messages, you can see her on YouTube at Roberta Morrison. Roberta Morrison 2, the backup channel. Living in His Presence Church on Rumble. Living in His Presence Church on BitChute. And at the livinginhispresence.org website, where you can see all the messages and download them as free audio MP3s. If you would like to contribute to this ministry, go to the main webpage, and on the top right is a Give button. Thank you, and see you next time.